organized at the same time under the umbrella of UNESCO World Conference on Arts and Cultural Education. We will be having Buenas tardes. Es un gusto. Good afternoon, everyone. It is a pleasure under the uh, framework of the UNESCO World Conference on Arts and Cultural Education to start this roundtable. I would like to express my gratitude to UNESCO and our key partners in this roundtable, CAV, uh, BID and Roberto Marino Foundation. Um, Regarding the experience of the OEI, it is it has a very wide experience because we were created as an organization 75 years ago, and our name indicates it. We are devoted to education, science, and culture. And between education and science, you have a link, which is the uh, um, art education uh, to reinforce the uh, arts education in the curricula of the different countries. We have also worked on reinforcing the uh, training of uh, teachers of arts education. It is for us a paramount topic, which uh, doesn't have to do only with uh, educational lessons, but also has to do with building up a society, uh, integrated society with no inequalities. Culture, in this sense, is a key element for social inclusion in order to enhance the coexistence among citizens and in order to develop, uh, in order to enhance the growth for our children and younger generations. In that sense, the OEI has worked on education and training in the arts education field and also in the cultural field. I would like to highlight the last work and contribution that we have made. In 2022, we developed a commission of experts in order to develop in the short term some general guidelines that we think that should uh, be the changes in the arts education in our region. I would like to highlight five of them just as a title, as a heading, because I'm sure that we are going to discuss about them in this roundtable. The first one has to do with development of cultural and arts uh, skills. As you know, cultural and artistic skills are not only developed in the curriculum, you need to develop them under the umbrella of several frameworks, which entails uh, deep work, aligning school curriculums in, with the involvement of teachers. Second, the training of trainers. That's a key element for all of us, the ability of teachers in order to convey the willingness, the closeness to the cultural sphere, not only as a consumer, but as a cultural producer, which is going to be one of the main lines that is going to be reinforced. Three, we need to generate indicators also in the educational field that tell us about the quality of the learning that we are providing our younger generations with. We have a deficit in our educational system, so we need to have these indicators in the same way as we consider them in other fields. Fourth, alliances. This is a very strategic point because the school is not only a curriculum, it has to be part of a network gathering curriculum, teachers and associations of culture producers that coexist within the social sphere and that has to work together with us so that our uh, 
youth can develop their skills. Fifth, it's the common ground between all the states in order to commit to the development of skills of our younger generation. It is a social right and it is the best investment that we can do so that our societies become more democratic and equal. In that sense, all the organizations here know how committed the OEI is and we're going to double our efforts in order to achieve our goals. Thank you for being here in this round table. And of course, we will be very interested in hearing your opinions in such an important seminar for us. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much. We're going to start this panel in English, but since the opening was conducted in Spanish, I'm going to say a few words in Spanish. You have just listened to the representative from the OEI. Thank you very much for that introduction. Without further ado, we're going to start our panel. I'm going to be the moderator of the event and we y vamos a estar en la conferencia mundial de la UNESCO sobre educación cultural y artística, alianzas regionales en cultura, educación artística e industrias creativas en Iberoamérica. Eh, quería agradecer de nuevo la colaboración de nuestras organizaciones, la OEI, el Banco Interamericano de Desarrollo, el Banco de Desarrollo en Latinoamérica y Caribe, la CAF, la Fundación Roberto Mariño y a nuestro invitado especial Netflix, que están realizando muchos esfuerzos para promover las industrias creativas, la cultura y la educación en toda Iberoamérica. Hoy nuestra discusión se centrará en los desafíos y oportunidades de invertir en el talento de las generaciones más jóvenes, especialmente aquellas que se enfrentan a barreras para acceder a una educación de calidad. Vamos a explorar la necesidad de invertir en el desarrollo del talento y promover... Eh, so, my name is Alejandro Luzardo. I am the creative leader at the Inter-American Development Bank. I am will be the moderator, so let's start. Uh, we are fortunate to have an exceptional speakers, and I am going to, to introduce uh, Trinidad Saldivar, the chief of the creative and cultural unit at the Inter-American Development Bank. Please, uh, Trinidad. Thank you, Alejandra. And, um... Thank you and uh, welcome to all the people that is connected today to this uh, panel. Uh, I'm very happy to, to talk uh, about what with the IDB is, is doing, the Inter-American Development Bank, and especially with such interesting panelists. And uh, as you may know, the, the IDB has been working uh, really thoroughly in the creative economy in the past decades, but especially in the past 10 years. Uh, and this is because this is a, a, a really interesting productive area for the region and we would like to make a difference uh, in this area. It represents the 3% of the world's GDP, employs that more than 30 million people. Um, so, and this also occurs in Latin America and the Caribbean where the cultural and creative industry generate revenues for of uh, 124 billion or it represents also the 2.2% of the regional GDP in Latin America and the Caribbean. So what we are doing right now, we're working as a bank in a multi-sectoral uh, perspective, with a multi-sectoral perspective in different areas, not just education, but uh, in really understanding the power of culture as a catalyst for social change, uh, or, but also as a product, productive area. And uh, we have this in our operations, uh, not only in uh, urban infrastructure, but also in education, the, the skills that are needed to this uh, industry to be developed. And this is something that uh, is fantastic today to, to have this perspective because we are addressing this um, 
in training people for the for the industry, specifically for the industry, but also developing different skills that are needed for the industries in general. The IDB is also working in developing public policies, uh, 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 courses, um, uh, empowerment for SMEs. Uh, there's an important um, focus in inclusion, job recovery, digitization, exportation of creative goods and services, and urban development. So today, um, I'm glad that we are invited, we're here, and Alejandra will uh, develop this conversation to all of us uh, to really understand the power of culture, not just um, as, a, as a good that is um, available for all of us, but also as it, its power, uh, as a great asset for our economy. So Alejandra, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Trinidad. And for those who are entering the conversation now, there are two links, one in English and one in Spanish. So you can hear this conversation in both languages. So let's start with the panel. It is my honor to introduce these amazing panelists. Uh, Joao Alegria, Secretary General of the Roberto Mariño Foundation. Uh, Alejandra Claros Borda, Secretary General of the Development Bank of Latin America and the Caribbean. Rafael Callao, General Director for Cultural of the Organization of Ibero-American State for Education, Science and Culture. Paulo Pires Duvale, Commissioner of the National Plan of Arts in Portugal. Maria Fernanda Prana, Prada, Sector Specialist in the Education Department at the Inter-American Development Bank. And Pierre-Emile Bandor, Director of Public Policy, Latin at Netflix. Welcome, everybody. As we move into the discussion, each institution will highlight various initiatives that address gaps in access to quality artistic education and development of creative talent. The discussion will emphasize the need for collaborative efforts to maximize opportunity for government, civil society, and to bring contribution from the private sector. Each panel will have seven minute window. I know it's, it's a small window time, but we, we, don't have, we don't have too much time to showcase their initiatives and results. Um, and for those, I am going to start with Joao. Uh, Joao, I know you are in Carnival, so you are you know, ready to, to go to the floor to dance a little bit in, in Brazil. So could you briefly uh, tell us about the Digital School Coliga, um, the impact that this school have, what kind the, the expectation you have with this project, um, also the link between the prof professionalization of the sector of the creative industry. Right now, I know that you have more over 53,000 students enrolled in this initiative. Really, really amazing. So please. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I will talk in Spanish only because I can talk more quickly in Spanish. Don't okay? worry. Go ahead. Uh, Olá, buenas tardes a todos. Em primeiro lugar, los quiero saludar a todos e todas. Everyone, I would like to say hello to everyone, especially to the specialists. And thank you for having invited me to participate in this event. I define myself as a person that is worried about people with disabilities. And as you can see, I'm wearing a flower shirt because it's the carnival in Brazil, a very important party or festivity for us because it is a big part of our identity. I would like to invite everyone here to think about the challenge that the young generation in my country is experiencing, not only my country, also in other Latin American countries when talking about uh, inclusion in education and in the work environment in order for them to have a, a decent uh, working condition in the future. In Brazil, there is a very limited supply of um, vocational training courses and the main cause of uh, dropping out the school is because the youth need to work in order to help the family survive. So this is a huge contradiction that we find in our country. The youth need to work, but they have not received the training, the adequate training 
for being prepared for that work position. Those young people that study uh, usually finished at the age of 12. That's the basic education. However, they have not learned as uh, much as they should have, and they have some difficulties in attending a school and keeping their training going on. In the end, they end up having informal job positions uh, with low qualification. We have lost the uh, sound from the speaker. I don't know. <clears throat> we cannot hear you, Joao. Well, we, we can. No podemos oírte, Joao. Así que vamos a pasarle la palabra al siguiente panelista. Um, so, Alejandra, nice to meet you. I haven't the pleasure before meeting you. Um, so, from CAS experience as a promoter of Latin American culture, what concrete impact has you perceived? when culture is supported. I would really like to understand how this organization work with the communities and the impact they have when they go there. Good morning, everyone. Eh, voy a hablar en español, haciendo honor al, al lenguaje y a nuestra lengua eh, mayoritaria en América Latina y el Caribe. Bueno, eh, como decía, mi nombre es Alejandra Claro, secretaria general de CAF. Nosotros como CAF estamos muy comprometidos en una nueva administración con la cultura y voy a hacer una pequeña introducción antes de ir a responder la pregunta. La importancia de traer el área de cultura y deporte a la Secretaría General es para darle un impulso mucho más fuerte. Quiero comentarles que en muchos años el área de cultura y deporte en CAF no tenía un dueño. Sports area within CAF uh, was not any under umbrella uh, because nobody was giving them the importance that they deserved. It was a way of organizing events instead of promoting culture in itself. Once we started working on it, I decided to say that I wanted to uh, manage this area because I think it ha it can have a very significant impact. And now I'm going to answer your question. CAF has conducted uh, studies on uh, inherited inequalities. According to our last study, the topics mentioned by the Roberto Mariño speaker about uh, school dropout um, makes us wonder where do we need to go? Where are we heading to? Uh, if we listen to the World Development Bank, children between 10 and 12 year old, uh, there is a high percentage of uh, these 10 to 12 year old children. También eh, nosotros queremos ver cómo podemos... Uh, do you not know how to read or Right. So we need to work on that. And also we need to uh, organize a system. In Venezuela, we have been working on this for 20 years, also with the support of the IBD. However, they, we stopped receiving this support. So it will be great that as a result of this panel, we can collaborate again. So what has the system done in terms of indicators? It managed to promote the uh, cultural education, mainly in the uh, music field for children in our country. There are 30 350 cores or centers within our country and it has had a great impact because through music education you can transform positively the society and also we have managed to generate free violence spaces because one of the main obstacles of our region is uh, delinquency and violence so 
we need to fight delinquency or crime uh, with education and culture because it is going to be one of the key elements to overcome these obstacles. That is why the CAF has decided to promote a training uh, system within our country. Our teachers are now recognized in Venezuela and then they can also be recognized uh, in the wider region in order to also train more teachers and more students to generate a passion for music. Another important impact that we have seen is to help to uh produce or generate content so that our youth can learn how to write and read now children are paying attention to reading and writing because there are more attractive content published on social media and they are interested in learning how to read them we want this panel to uh, create alliances and to call the attention of Netflix present here to say that we can create attractive content aimed at our children so that we can incentivize them to write and read. That is why last year we organized the first contest, contest on writing and reading together with an association because we consider that this is a key element to breaking the inequalities, the inequality barriers. Through this impact, we want to manage better all cultural activities. And we believe that if we join efforts and we create alliances, as this is the goal of the SDG of creating alliances. We would like to create an alliance with the OEI, with the IDB, uh, because we're going to organize a cultural agenda together with the OEI. And we also want to collaborate with Roberto Marino Foundation and with Netflix for the Latin American and Caribbean area in order to promote education through reading and writing, through literacy, through music, artistic, educational, and also to promote those emerging artists in the region. We are going to try to eliminate those inherited inequalities. Thank you very much, Alejandra. It is a, a wonderful initiative, the orchestra that you have mentioned. So the IDB and CAF have uh, organized a wonderful project. Oh, we have back our um, speaker, Jao Alegria. Sí, perdona, tenía un problema de electricidad. As I was saying in brazil we have uh, 10 million people between 15 and 21 year olds who have not received basic education or vocational training the young brazilians are extremely creative with a great ability to discover new paths most of them are still emerging and they come from creative industries and creative economies. So the Colliga.Digital project was born two years ago as an innovative project of a culture, technology and creative economy virtual school aimed at the most vulnerable young people within Brazil. It is a dream that we have always dreamed of uh, both Roberto Marino Foundation and the OEI, and it has already given us the first results. It is already on the uh, globalization stage. This Coliga project was built within a continuous uh, debate with our youth. And what does it offer? It offers education, so free courses, uh, self-learning courses on culture, technology, and creative economy. They are free, no fees. There are already 
already around 40 courses with around 60,000 uh, with around 50,000 um, students, which is a very high rate. It also offers internships and it makes the difference because we're creating a practice, uh, uh, the opportunity of uh, taking this knowledge into practice through specific projects based on collaborations. In 2023, there were 29 um, opportunities of remunerated internships with many key partners in Brazil. And this is a key element in order to make them stay within the educational field. We're also promoting the creation of networks between students, teachers, partners, employers. There are one more than 120 organizations working with the youth in our territory in order to foster communities, to be committed to the youth and so on. Most recently, we have offered the possibility of studying in what we called Colega laboratories that are managed by our partners who have the appropriate equipment with computers, internet, that our young people can use in order to uh, dive into their educational skills. This Colega Digital project has managed to achieve its main goal. The most vulnerable young people in uh, Brazil uh, we have seen uh, an equal participation between women and men, and we have received higher participation from the uh, black community within Brazil, especially uh, black women. As for the results, we have seen that four out of 10 certified students had a remunerated job position thanks to the courses that they had received in this Colega digital project. So we are very glad and proud of sharing this powerful alliance with every one of you. I hope that you visit our website in order to uh, get more familiar with uh, our project, colega.digital. Thank you, and sorry for the uh, technical problems. Now I'm going to uh, promote this project. As you can see, all these projects had to do with music, creativity, cultural design. I took a look at all the courses in your website, so I invite everyone in the panel to visit the website in order to participate in this incredible initiative. Now we're going to move the floor to Rafael, who has worked hand in hand with me. As you know, many of the projects that we are going to share today have been created in collaboration with the OEI. So can you tell us how the OEI has been able to combine the cultural topic and the educational topic? In, uh, by promoting this continuous dialogue in order to develop uh, several initiatives. So you have the floor. Thank you, thank you, Alejandra. Si no les importa, voy a hablar en español porque es una de las lenguas oficiales de la OEI. Anyway, and uh, we have the, the translation to uh, from Spanish into English and from the English into Spanish. So everybody's going to understand everything we say, both languages. Pero ahora hablando ya en español, así que me gustaría... Now moving to Spanish, I would like to thank you again for your presence and for the cooperation of the CAF, of the ABIRI, also uh, Paulo Pires, uh, Pires de Valle as uh, Commissioner of the National Plan of Arts in Portugal. And thank you also 
for the cooperation of Netflix that will explain the initiatives of the private sector to this topic, which is that important. I'm the general director of culture in the OEI, and uh, I'm this department, my department is working on uh, in favor of culture, arts and science and education. Uh, in this sense, I'm going to explain uh, a selection of the different projects that in which we've participated in the past years, which are uh, more than 190 agreements and that represent more than 53 million dollars in uh, culture project management we've been working with 200 uh, and uh, people and more than 30,000 artists so there are different uh, contributions from the OEI to culture and we also like to uh, focused on educational and on arts education in the region. In the past two years, we've launched two publications, one in Ecuador after the fifth Ibero-American uh, Conference on Arts Education that took place in Ecuador. After that conference, we published a report in order to articulate the different debates that we've had around this topic. And there is another publication which is arts education, a step forward. This has been developed with uh, specialists from different fields and different regions. And also in this publication, we talk into depth about this topic with people such as Gemma Carbon, Marian Lopez, Lucina Jimenez, that have contributed uh, to this topic and to this publication and that you can read uh, because it's available to to everyone and it gives more information about what we've been doing in this sense we see also different statistics reports on the topic we also work on a different topic which is very important too which is the spread of good practices in the region which is i think very important as a mechanism to influence to have an influence on other activities and initiatives from successful stories in the ibero-american region and also i would like to talk about the contribution of non-formal education spaces that can be also an ally in order to guarantee uh, the rights of people to participate in cultural lives through different um, resources different uh, media and i would like to mention the uh, final uh, declaration of 2022 of mudia and uh, this extends the results on this topic and also recognizes the importance of promoting the systemic integration of culture also through the support of different segments of the society for example uh, museums creative centers libraries archives and cultural institutions in a broader way likewise the cultural the Ibero-American cultural chart chart which uh, describes the cooperation of the Ibero-American region in this matter and that um, was established in 2006 in Montevideo it states different recognitions to in the field of culture and arts education and also their, their contribution to identity to knowledge generation and transformation in our societies and it also goes beyond that and recognizes the importance of progressing in, in the incorporation of arts education in different educate educative uh, programs and curricula in order to uh, to to train critical uh, cultural audiences and also another very successful experience that reproduces this very important dialogue space in the society and that promotes citizenship and the relationship between 
citizenship, arts and education, both in formal and informal spaces uh, associ associating these two fields is the experience of the OEI in the management of the uh, Rio Arts Museum, M-I-A-R, which has a very strong presence in Brazil, is one of the most visited museums in Brazil, and about one million people visit the museum, has visited the museum in the past two years. The Arts Museum of Rio has also a a role in the field of education, and we call it the School of Sight of Look, which develops courses, conferences, and a series of activities linked to education. And this shows the link of culture and education in a very inclusive way. And also, it gives the opportunity to more and more people to access and participate in cultural life through the different tools that this museum offers. So in this, in the past years, more than 94,000 people registered in our conferences and we could see that the audience was made of mainly students about 274 people could benefit from this project. And it is also important to uh, talk about the effect that this school has in education, reflection, and uh, in also taking into account the inclusivity of the society uh, through a strategy that aims to link the relationship between art and culture. This is likewise a museum that has a huge uh, curation capacity and can recognize young artists that ha are put at the same level as uh, more experienced artists with projects that approach social, historical, eth ethnical uh, topics. They are, revolve around different issues such as religion, culture, etc. Another important um, aspect I would like to share with you is that in 2023, we did a survey, a research, in which more than 3,000 people participated especially in the neighborhoods around the museum and uh, around two kilometers away from the museum in order to understand the impact of the museum in order to be able to to interpret the, the data of the visitors uh, to the museum. What we could see is very interesting. We could see that on average, The aver on average, uh, there are more people visiting this museum compared to the average at the national level. So these uh, neighborhoods around the museum are more involved uh, to the museum and help other people get involved with the activities of the museum something that I think is very interesting because in a very objective way, it shows that creating a dialogue in the territory has an impact in the way people can appropriate of the cultural heritage of the region. So thanks to these reports, these publications, uh, and uh, this uh, experience of democratization of cultural spaces, their uh, participation of people in cultural activities have been enhanced. I would like to invite you to get to know more about these publications, these reports, and these experiences 
in the Rio Museum under the management of the OEI. And of course, if you have any question or any comment, I will I will be more than willing to to give you more information about this activity, these experiences that I think have been very successful. Thank you so much again for the opportunity, and I'm going to give the floor to Alejandra. Thank you so much, uh, Rafael. I think the main idea is collaborating closely to museums. Uh, ministries of Education should see museums as an opportunity to capitalize culture. Now I'm going to move to Paulo Pires do Valle. Sé que uno de los objetivos del Plan Nacional de las Artes es asegurar la importancia de las artes y del patrimonio en el aprendizaje a lo largo de toda la vida. Entonces, ¿podría explicar brevemente cuál es la idea fundamental que deberían adoptar los gobiernos? This, this plan and the goals you have and this amazing project, which I think is a pioneering in the global in a global level. Thank you so much, Alejandra. I will speak in English. Voy a hablar en uh, inglés. Um, and sorry because I'm destroying uh, the language of uh, Shakespeare and Eliot, but uh, I, I, uh, it would be worth uh, probably if I speak in Spanish or uh, Castellano. Uh, but I will try to explain um, in English what's the national plan for the arts, uh, what we are doing, and uh, uh, why we think uh, is important a plan like, like this. And I start like in there. Um, before how uh, before the how the plan uh, exists um, and is realized in all the country, um, um, we need to think the why. Uh, probably is my uh, philosophical formation, but uh, it's necessary to explain why we need more arts, more heritage, and more cultural institutions uh, in education or in the life of uh, people, uh, our citizens' uh, life. Uh, usually we pass through that because we understand or think that everyone understands the importance uh, of this, but it's not true. And uh, uh, we, the cultural agents, need to explain really why uh, we need this, uh, and for all. Uh, not only in schools, and I will talk about that, uh, but especially uh, in education. And first, explaining this uh, why before the how, uh, I want to just, because I don't have time, I just want to say uh, three uh, things. First, because arts and cultures and uh, um, heritage, and I'm always uh, using the plural, uh, because it's in diversity and in plural uh, way that we need to think about it. Um, our way of form our attention, our way of expanding our experience and reshape the horizon of our possibilities. And that's really uh, the importance of arts and uh, uh, heritage in uh, education, the possibility of opening the world of possibilities of each uh, student, uh, of each citizen. Uh, we build our identity in dialogue with this deposit of humanity, and we need always uh, this presence uh, or more present uh, heritage, plural, arts and cultural manifestations uh, in all not only, not only during the uh, school, but uh, also in university and after. And we, I will try to also talk about uh, this after. Because arts are not a part of erudition or erudite uh, knowledge, uh, uh, but part of life. Uh, and is that existence that we need to, uh, um, to think uh, in relation between in the relation between art, culture, and education, it should be it should be a pleasure, and we need to think more about that question of pleasure in uh, our lives and uh, especially in school, joy, and is not. Uh, and I think Carnaval is an uh, incredible way uh, of thinking about this idea of the importance of joy in our, in our life. Uh, education is not, as Aristophanes uh, 
uh, wrote is not uh, filling off a vessel, but kindling or kindling a flame. How can we uh, create this flame inside our students is the more, most important and not filling a vessel because uh, that's don't, that don't give opportunity of uh, want more. We need the idea of this not enough. Uh, it's not enough. Uh, and culture uh, manifestations are always in that uh, sense the way of not being able to be satisfied. Uh, don't feel it as enough. Um, and uh, also in this idea of having multiple experiences and multiple languages, we need these multiple languages in our life. We transformed school in very over-rationalized, verbal and logical, and we need this dimension of the body uh, our relationship with the body, uh, the possibilities of our body and bodies of others, and um, to understand ourselves and to invest in the world in uh, other ways, and not only this verbal or logical. Uh, we need to develop different languages, different artistic languages, and to give uh, opportunity to know these languages. This is a way of creating autonomy. Uh, we need all these to create autonomy in uh, citizens and citizens. And that's the way of creating, we believe, uh, better democracies. We are always uh, thinking about the possibility of a better democracy. And of course, inclusion. We cannot have an inclusive school uh, without these uh, different dimensions, dif different languages, and uh, the possibility of finding a way of being a part, feel a part. And uh, cultural manifestations, manifestations give us also that, uh, being part of an uh, infinite task, something that started before us and will keep going after us. And being a part, having roots, but having also wings is something is very important to our uh, youngsters and to all the citizens. Then we, I, I could give you much more whys, uh, but I have to pass to the how. Uh, after the whys, we, uh, we, we thought that we need to change also some hows. Uh, the way we made this uh, proposition to uh, schools and to education and to cultural institutions. First, uh, in, in three uh, possibilities. Uh, uh, first, thinking in a systemic way. Um, we need all the village. Um, then we have to change the way of thinking only in school in a way of changing anything. Uh, we need all the village. It, we, then we have uh, measures and programs in National Plan for the Arts for uh, the ministries, of course, and um, working not inside of one of the ministries, but with the two, really, with the three, because we have the Ministry of Education, Culture, and uh, higher education. You have these three ministries with who, uh, whom we work. Uh, it's very important. We are not part of one. We are in the middle, we are in the frontiers. Uh, we, um, we don't belong to only one of them. And that's really important because even inside uh, councils, uh, city councils or other institutions, education and culture don't dialogue. Uh, they do whatever they do, but don't have um, uh, mediation organizations. And we need these uh, organizations that are bridges. Uh, National Plan for the Arts, it's a bridge between this uh, education and culture. And I think it's very important to use the uh, creation of bridge. uh, bridges. Sorry. First, then, don't think only about uh, the school as, a, as the place. We need to raise awareness of this transformation transform, as someone already said, uh, critical uh, cultural institutions in uh, educational territory, 
transform museums, uh, theaters, cinemas in educational territory, and schools in uh, cultural centers. I think that's the great change. If we think a school as a cultural center, then you have to have a program. The school has to have a program, have to think uh, what's uh, doing uh, in uh, the cultural activities, in, with the arts, with the community uh, in, in the square kilometer of the school, not only inside the school, but for the community. Uh, the relation between the school and the museums, the theaters, the artists, and that's the proposition we do to transform the school in a cultural center and to transform the museum and the theater and the library in uh, educational territory in a school. Then this subversive proposition is changing, I think, uh, things uh, over here. Then to create structures, not events. We don't need more events. We need structures that change the way people relate with culture. And that's what we are try, uh, trying also with training but not training only for teachers and changing always, uh, even before university, the training of teachers or the formation of teachers, but also the formation of mediators, uh, cultural centers, uh, directors, uh, museum directors, curators. We need to change the way everyone thinks about um, culture and education and uh, the importance of all these, but also foundations and um, uh, banks like uh, we are here and other um, participants. We need to foster collaboration uh, in all the village. That's the first. Second is changing, uh, sorry, just in the first, one thing that's very, very important, the, the role of the artists. We need to rethink the role of the artists in, in society. Then we propose, one of the propositions we do is to have um, um, residency, artists, artists in residencies inside schools, like a cultural center uh, during the year. Um, this proposition is also this transformation of the school in a cultural center, in artistic center, uh, having uh, an artist um, in school during the, the year. Uh, and that's trusting in the in the in this role of the artist and in the artistic artistic process to transform the school uh, also. Uh, second, and sorry, I have to talk really quickly. Uh, and second, um, and this is a strategic principle, another strategic principle of how. First, be systemic. Second, being underdisciplinary. And disciplinary, sorry. Um, think otherwise, not in disciplines, but we need another school. Uh, we need a school that is more transdisciplinary. Uh, that can put together the different uh, ways of thinking about the world being more complex and not proposing more uh, artistic disciplines, but thinking about uh, art and heritage as a way for all the disciplines. Uh, it's an instrument for all the disciplines. Um, and teachers, all the teachers, the philosophy teacher, the maths uh, or the science teacher can be a cultural agent. That's something that's very important for us in this cultural center that's the school, that each teacher understand that he can be, uh, even if he is giving classes of English, of Portuguese or whatever, it's, uh, he is a cultural agent in that school. Um, and that's the importance, of course, of training and giving access to all, uh, even uh, all the teachers uh, of to more art. Then don't think about creating more disciplines. I think that's not the answer, uh, but think otherwise as uh, 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 how not uh, specialization is a very uh, uh, it's, a, it's a problem <laughs> in our time. 
the I think we need to be against the excess of specialization and the fragmented disciplines uh, that not allow to understand the complexity of the, the world and stimulate transdisciplinary dynamics uh, through the arts and through the cultural manifestations. That's uh, the proposition we made make uh, in schools. And third, just to finish, um, try to think not in democratized culture, but in creating a real uh, cultural democracy. Uh, democratized culture is still a way of thinking about inequality. Someone that knows what culture is and wants to put that culture uh, in relation with all the people. Uh, but some, somehow that way of thinking um, and the value, the other, other cultures, possibilities, um, other heritages, um, other arts, because it's always a kind of thinking culture in a, a singular way, one way. Uh, and that's the uh, important culture. Uh, to transform the democratization of culture in cultural democracy, we need to um, foster participation of everyone, to say to everyone that their culture is important, not to stay there, but to open the possibilities of others and to give the opportunity of that relation with other experience uh, to everyone. Uh, I cannot uh, explain more about this here, but if uh, you are interested, we can talk after, but also you can find it in uh, a charter that we promote uh, three years ago, Porto Santo Charter. You found it. You find it uh, online. It's an um, European uh, charter that you, we propose to rethink the importance of democracy and culture in democracy, in the health of democracy, uh, in our um, in our world, in our time, um, and uh, all this. I think the great goal uh, of the National Plan for the Arts is to raise this uh, awareness of being each one, being a cultural agent. I think that's the more important. The way we are already, and we understand already that we are ecological agents. Uh, what we do or what we don't do have uh, impact. Also in culture, what we do or we don't do have an impact. And we need to raise this uh, awareness in each one, in each student, and that he or she can be part of this uh, cultural environment uh, of uh, the square kilometer where he or she lives. That's for us the most important, this responsibility of each other, of each one, and uh, to promote this cultural commitment. Um, to do that. Gracias, Paulo. Thank you so much, and sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Infeliz de escucharte. Qué increíble proyecto. La verdad que necesitamos trabajar más interseccionalmente entre los ministerios de cultura, pero con educación, con hacienda. More interdisciplinary way, and also with different ministries, uh, economy, tax and ministries. Now I'm going to give the floor to Maria Fernanda Prada, my colleague from the Inter-American uh, Development Bank. The Sandbox, audio, Audiovisual Sandbox is a great project. We had uh, we had more than 7,000 young people interested in this project. For all of you who don't know how, what this project is, please explain how it happened, the different phases, the beneficiaries of the project, which because I think beneficiaries are going to be very important in order to complement what has been discussed in this panel and how all the uh, skills, competences can be incorporated in the needs of the 21st century. Thank you very much, Alejandra, and thank you for having invited me to talk about this project. It's a project that has uh, broken many schemes that we used 
to have in the past. It's a project that aims to provide training to the youth, especially those that live in the most remote areas and that has uh, have been more affected by the violence. So the main idea of the project was to bring closer uh, the uh, audiovisual opportunities to the youngsters. In the first stage of the project, we kind of do uh, kind of immersion so that the students could understand uh, the main goals. Then we provided a training not only in technical skills, but also the specific knowledge within the audiovisual field and also regarding the social emotional aspects such as teamwork, everything that is necessary in order to work in co in collaborations. We also uh, offered practice interns, uh, practical internships so that they could use the real equipment. After the training, we uh, offered them the opportunity to receive some income so that they could have an internship within a local producing company. Uh, so that they get to know more uh, how the production world works. And then the last stage of the project was mentoring, mentoring uh, by real stakeholders within the industry that were explaining our youth how the audiovisual world works. Uh, my colleague mentioned the importance of the involvement of uh, artists within this educational project, and so we did in our initiative from the beginning. What we did with this project was to involve the creative industry from the beginning to the end, from the design stage. Uh, we started this project with a study conducted by Alejandra and Netflix on ha on the on these uh, skill gaps. What the audiovisual industry was lacking from in order to uh, work properly. So we started this project in order to provide an response to this challenge. We started working with people from 18 to 30 years old from six different departments, Chocó, La Guajira, Puntumayo, Sucre, Cauca, and Cundinamarca. Those territories were the ones that I mentioned earlier that are located in, a, in very remote areas. And I think this project was very innovative in several senses. I'm going to share with you three main aspects. The first, was the collaboration with the audiovisual industry from the beginning to the end, from the design stage to the training of our youngsters and mentoring. Second, the most important second aspect was the fact that we were working with vulnerable people and we decided to offer them what uh, the best quality possible and obviously, when you're working with people that have had limited access to education, internet, or, of, or other resources was a big challenge because there were many gaps to uh, tackle. We worked together with Creana, which are leaders in the industry, so that they could offer them uh, online training. We also worked with other leading companies within Colombia. We worked with these companies in order for them to offer practical internships to our students. So we were working with vulnerable people, but we decided to offer them the best that we had. I have been working on the technical educational field for over 10 years. And what we did was to bring the knowledge, the best practices. We know that best practices is not only technical skills, but also social skills, 30, 30, 21st century skills, skills that require not only a notebook and a pen, but other kind of skills. And third, uh, 
people need to learn how they are going to be involved in a working environment. They need to learn how to work in real life. And fourth, we offered them the possibility of having a mentor to guide them through the whole process because on many occasions people do not have a family that shows them basic fundamentals and another point that i also wanted to share with you is the fact of alliances we created alliances with the private sector and also with the ministry of culture because in education we are working under the umbrella of the ministry of culture and then we started to transform all those spaces where education is key so we changed the way we worked in schools in order to bring training to those vulnerable people and this was possible thanks to the collaboration with the ministries private sector netflix and many other different agents that enabled us to carry out this project before ending i wanted to tell you that the results that we have seen are great and i think you mentioned that art is shapes good opportunities and i think that one of the first impacts that the first results in just two days was to transform the way they were thinking about their future after only two days of training 60 percent of our students thought they were going to be working or studying in the future while however in the beginning that was not their um, idea of future because for vulnerable people they don't usually have the chance of thinking about the future they usually live one day after another so we provided them with the possibility of dreaming of themselves doing something important in uh, five years time so we could see changes in uh, learning specific skills a high percentage, 90% of our students uh, said they had improved their technical knowledge on the audiovisual industry. This percentage moved from 27% to almost 90%. Also, 70% of our students were hired in the companies where they had carried out their internships. And finally, in inclusion terms, we achieved uh, mainly, we received the participation mainly from women, uh, from some ethnias such as uh, indigenous peoples, so we achieved around 29-30% of indigenous participation in our projects. I would love to talk uh, more about this topic, but I just wanted to let you know how we created the project, the impact that we had, and the most innovative initiatives within the project. Thank you very much, Maria Fernanda. I'm part of this project and I would like to highlight that 17% of participants came from indigenous population, 22% from Afro communities, 8.4% from LGTB communities, and 12% from communities that were affected by the armed conflict. So this shows that we have reached all communities and that makes a big difference. Uh, that shows the importance of reaching all the territories within our region. And finally, we have an incredible partner together with us. We started working with Netflix some time ago, uh, mainly understanding each other in terms of figures because we didn't have much data on the audiovisual sector. I know that Netflix has carried out great efforts to extract all these data together with organizations such as the, uh, I, the BID. But Netflix also has another project in order to reinforce the audiovisual talent. I would like to ask Pierre, uh, we know that your industry 
needs qualified talent but why did netflix decide to invest in talent making sure that all talents are represented in the audiovisual world you have the floor pierre and also you can talk about the multiplied impact thank you very much for your invitation i'm going to speak in spanish Thank you very much for all the previous speakers. It was very interesting for me to listen to their presentations. In order to provide you with a brief introduction, I imagine you know what Netflix does, but anyway, I'm going to explain it. It is a on-demand uh, service platform. Sometimes Netflix is referred to as a platform. However, for us, a platform is a tool that enables you to have an interaction between a uh, service and a user. However, uh, Netflix has some creating aspects involved regarding the acquisition of content that are shown in Netflix. You uh, previously you acquire or you invest in that production and then later on it is distributed through this uh, technology tool. This service is present in uh, 190 countries and as you know it started as a DV as an online DVD renter service. In 2000 seven this uh on demand video uh, platform was created and it was made international in 2011 that's as for the history of netflix the original contents of netflix outside netflix uh was a content created in mexico 2015 so the history of internationalization of Netflix started in Latin America, in Mexico. Obviously, if you are uh, users of Netflix, you know that there is a quite a wide range of contents, uh, genres, even video games and from different origins. There are over 35 languages and uh, contents that uh, represent whole societies, not only Club de Cuervos, the first Mexican content, but also the Squids game or the Snow Society or the House of Paper, uh, the Money Heist. So in this kind of contents, Netflix finds unique stories and then shares them around the world. I wanted to mention specifically that something that many people don't know is that Netflix produces 100% of its content, not in a direct way uh, as we do in the uh, United States of America, but through local producing companies. 100% of content is produced locally by a network of producing companies. That means that the development of a local ecosystem, which is efficient, diverse, health, healthy, is directly linked to Netflix interest. The better this local producing company uh, that reinforces the audiovisual industry at the local level, the better for Netflix. Uh, because our way of working goes hand in hand with local, with a local producing environment. At the same time, uh, we lack much data on the topic, and that is why we have 
collaborated with other institutions, among which the Ibero-American Development Bank, to understand the structure of this local producing environment in Latin America. As we have mentioned earlier, we first started mapping all those high demand professions in Latin America with a low supply. So there was a great potential for people within our region because Latin American producers were saying when I'm starting a collaboration with an international producing company, it is difficult for me to uh, organize my team because we lack qualified people. So that lack, that deficit was translated as an opportunity to create training courses in order to give response to the high demand because it was hard to find people with the uh, needed skills. We also started to think about uh, uh, about the audiovisual industry as a strategic economic driver. So we have a different interest between the local producing environment, the desire from governments to offer more professional development to their citizens with higher uh, remunerations. And it is also uh, good for Netflix because we are in Latin America for the long term, not only in Mexico, but we are based in Mexico where we coordinate our uh, production chain in the main four countries where we produce content. We have also collaborated with the IDB uh, in order to conduct a study in uh, Brazil, Argentina, Mexico and Colombia in order to improve the efficiency of the investment in the audiovisual industry. For each dollar invested, we need to make sure that there are new income generated for the region, both direct and in in uh, both in an indirect and direct way. And we also need to understand what other sectors are being impacted by this audiovisual industry. Two per two thirds of the uh, income generated by this audiovisual industry affect other sectors such as hotel and restaurants and so on. So our idea was to contribute to the wider knowledge present within Latin America regarding the opportunities of investment in this audiovisual sector to keep fostering it. Uh, when talking about in incentives, there are several programs of incentives within the region, such as in the uh, uh, Dominican Republic or Colombia, which are key because they enable them to develop more ambitious projects and attract international investment. But a true in incentive is to invest in the development of local skills. It can only work when it comes hand in hand with a strong uh, workforce with a strong network of local companies that can benefit from these incentives programs because uh, these uh, incentive programs are not aimed at the international producer but at the local producer to attract inter international investment and uh, become more efficient and com and competent. So we need to train um, and qualify our staff in order for them to participate in uh, different productions that are quite diverse. Uh, for example, you have international um, productions and blockbuster productions, but other type of contents are created at the local level. 
uh, in 2000 and since 2015, we have taken several steps forward so that local producing companies have been able to uh, produce incredible productions such as uh, the creation of 100 years of solitude that in uh, that thanks to uh, public policies um, was created was produced at the local level in Colombia with a very significant industrial economic and cultural impact which is uh, and constant uh, which cannot be argued there are several of them, such as Pedro Paramo or others. So Netflix wants to do, keep on diving into the training within the uh, sector, also to share awareness on the uh, uh, existence of this knowledge so that people know that they have uh, available data that they can use in order to develop uh, several projects so we can contribute to making these figures and data more known about the society and uh, as i have said uh, before we need to strengthen the relationship that we have with the institutions that we collaborate with with in order to uh, provide more of it opportunities. Finally, I wanted to say that in terms of impact, uh, the most immaterial impact, so as to say, we have also analyzed how the audience from other regions uh, approach a different region or a country uh, based on the uh, um, movies or TV shows that are generated in that country. Uh, obviously, people accessing content from different countries such as Colombia, Mexico, Argentina, Brazil are twice as likely to be interested in that country as a tourist destination or any other interest. Sorry, I say it twice likely, but it's 26% uh, of people are more interested in getting to know the culture, the cuisine, the gastronomy, the standard of living, and so on. 24% more interested in getting to know the landmark and the history of the country and uh, 2.4 times more to be interested in that country as a tourist destination. So that's another impact that can be extracted from this cultural production. These countries have now more and more opportunities to be present in the screens around the world. Thank you very much, Pierre. Thank you for the last data, which are very interesting. How can we maximize the audiovisual sector? I'm being told that we need to conclude our session, but first of all, I would like to withdraw some conclusions. We need to take into account the fact that that there are 38 agents involved in the audiovisual sector. There are many sectors that need to be analyzed so that we can understand how to work hand in hand with the private sector so that we know how to employ the youngsters. So in addition to culture, which I agree that it is key, because it is opening a satisfaction path, uh, but it also offers a work opportunity and the possibility of changing lives. One of the things that we managed to do in the Ibero-American Development Bank is to change the way we talk of things. We're talking about industries. We are referring to industries, to ministries that 
usually were not treated as such. For example, the Ministry of Culture is not usually considered as an industry. And because of that, they have difficulties when it comes to approving the budget. So that is why we are referring to them now as industry so that they have more ability to work on their developments. Also, I would like to say that thanks to the presence of these new platforms and school, uh, virtual schools and virtual platforms, we are offering more opportunities to our younger generations. And we need the collaboration of all ministries, including the Treasury, uh, the home, uh, home Affairs Industry, the Cultural, in, uh, the cultural Ministry, and so on. We need to be aware of the fact that what we have is not enough. We need to attract people in order to drive our strategy forward because we need to create those opportunities. So I think that the journey we are all embarking on is very relevant, but we need to work as a team. So this is an invitation for all of you to keep on working hand in hand, to keep on collaborating, to keep on creating partnership and in order to put on the agenda the aspects of culture in order to give a voice to people that have been unheard for many time. Um, and so that's it. It has been great to have heard so many successful stories from the different uh, countries within our region. Uh, we keep in touch to keep on working to get the best results. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Alejandra. Alejandra. Alejandra, Alejandra, claro, te quiero escribir, te quiero, quiero conectarme contigo, no sé, no tengo tu contacto. Bueno, sí, aquí te justo te iba a escribir a claros.com. Yeah.